Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of It Starts With Action. Today I'm really grateful to have Vincent, co-founder of the Open Private School and head of operations, Caroline. The mission of the Open Private School is to bridge the gap between private and state school students by connecting state school students with really, really amazing mentors. And I can't wait for you guys to listen to the episode, so let's just get into it. Now, I honestly, I've never seen a mentorship program like this one-to-one mentor with really top professionals like as someone from a state school I completely agree with your mission about how it's really hard for state schools to people to really gain the opportunities compared to like private school um it would be really interesting to hear about why you guys decided to start the open private school because from the website I saw that it was through just um an idea from like a meal and then you just like act on it. Like so many people have ideas, but it never becomes something because they don't take action. On it. it started with myself and my one of my best friends, Jack Rubin, and him and I. We like we 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 argue a lot, <laughs> particularly <laughs> particularly over over politics. But this was one of the few things when we were having a discussion that we agreed on that going to private school makes a significant difference to to the opportunities that you have in the future. A week later or so, I think we went we went for dinner with another one of our best friends, uh, Harry Little. And then we were discussing this, we were discussing this at dinner. And I think the way it happened was we were discussing it and then Harry said, whatever this is, then I, I want to be involved. And then I think I was kind of thinking like, there's nothing really to be involved in. <laughs> but I didn't, uh, <laughs> I didn't want to, uh, to to let him down. So from then, we just we just said, okay, let's meet up. Let's have a meeting, let's do it. I think in the first meeting, we came up with what we want to call it, the Open Private School. Mm-hmm. And then we started, to, and then in that meeting, we started talking about what we can do to close the gap between state school and private school students. And we started off by looking at like education and stuff. But then we realized that there are, there are massive disparities within private education, the same way there's massive disparities within state school education. So it doesn't explain why there's such a gap between people who go to private school and people who end up in positions of influence. So then we kind of just started thinking about what made a difference in each other's lives. And we were talking about the people that we met on the way and how we would never have got to where we got to without them. And that's when we kind of started thinking about pairing people with really high class mentors. Mm. So we started reaching out to our network, started chatting to a few people and just getting some like cooperation over the idea, started putting a website together. And then it was very quickly after that that we we were very quickly after that we decided we needed some help. I thought Caroline would be great. I spoke to her about it and she really identified with our ethos and message and decided to help us. And then since then it's kind of, since then it's mostly been the four of us and we've just kind of I, th- I think we've just kind of dealt with all the problems that have arisen as they come. And then we were quite shocked mm. when we actually got to the release date and we were like, it's actually here that we mm. managed to, to do it. So, yeah, that's kind of how it happened. Yeah, I think one of the hardest things is when you're setting something up is we've never done anything like this before. So it's really hard to foresee the problems that you might come up against. And there's just been so many learning curves from the very beginning yeah. but um, like obviously all very exciting and as you know we're trialing it at the moment with our pilot with five mentees and then hopefully want to perfect it so that we can expand as quick as possible so that we can give this opportunity to many more you guys said that you had a lot of hurdles could you share a bit about that I feel like it's because of not knowing where to start that makes people not start um, and afraid of failure and just having to be perfect Um, so could you share a bit about your journey in terms of what like challenges you faced and how you overcame it i think i think what's really helped i think what really helped us is that jack is an entrepreneur so he's really used to starting he's really used to starting things he's currently started in in the past he started a business called pinger which was a peer-to-peer like delivery service he's now with a business called purdy and fig which sells a premium hand sanitizer and I think he's just kind of always, he's the one that kind of has the attitude 
that was like, we need to just start it. We need to just have a meeting. I think what kind of stops people and what paralyzed me a little bit at the start is if you, you, you can never, you start to think about all the things that could possibly go wrong, all the things you don't know, all the things that you haven't been able to source out. And I really do feel as if you have to just cross that bridge and get started, and then you have to just try to deal with the problem when they arise. If a problem comes that's too big that you can't get over, then you kind of just, then you have to just wait until that moment happens. Like I'm sure you would have mm-hmm. had many, I'm sure you would have had some hurdles yourself when starting your, your podcast and you wouldn't have ever thought they would happen and you just kind of dealt with them. I also think that if you build a good team around you, it really helps kind of bring your strength and confidence because, you know, all of a sudden you've got four heads together trying to overcome one problem that you've, that's arisen rather than just being on your own and that's potentially just my personality but I I really enjoy working in a team and thinking about it together and coming up with the best solution together because when you're on your own it can actually be quite overwhelming and maybe encourage you to take a step back when actually you really should be taking a step forward but it's just harder when you're on your own I think Vince would probably have a very different perspective on that because he's just like we're very different personalities he's quite he's like a gung-ho whereas I'm a bit more timid and shy when it comes to those sort of things I was just gonna say I think it's very it's very important to have uh that that diversity in terms of mindsets it's very important to have um different types of people like I could often like sometimes there may be times where perhaps I need to where I need to push Caroline a little bit to do something but then there's also times when I could do something crazy and get stopped from doing that (laughs) exactly we manage each other for me I'm always alone and I've learned to like kind of rely on myself for everything it's only recently that I realized how important like having people that support you and have like different opinions around is important why like why do you think it's important for young people to have a mentor I think having a mentor is I think it's critical I think first you kind of have to know what it is that you want to do and then I think having a mentor it has adds real value because you're finding someone who's been there and, and done it and in your chosen area which is what the open private school is about there are a number of hurdles that you'll face yourself but there are also a number of hurdles that have been faced and cleared for you that you don't need to face again but you might not mm-hmm. know about mm-hmm. and that, that's to do with differences in um maturity levels differences in in backgrounds and just differences of your experiences of the working world and having a mentor can really help you to bring out that inner belief that you can actually that you can have a big dream and, and you can do it and they hopefully will be there to guide you all the way. Of course, young people who don't have a mentor but want a mentor and perhaps want it like this year but perhaps um, like didn't get into the open private school, then what advice would you give them in terms of how could they find a mentor themselves and perhaps they're like afraid to like put themselves out there to network? Do you have any tips for them? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think you have to be brave and it might be daunting like in my personal opinion you kind of assume that these people are inundated with requests um and actually that's not the case because there's not that many people that are brave enough to ask them and so you are actually the anomaly not the other way around and so often people are willing to help um and so it's really really important you know you can source them from like listening to podcasts you might find someone really interesting and you could find them on LinkedIn or there might be other researchers that you um, do and you can find them in other ways but I would really really encourage people to be brave because you just don't know what opportunities or doors it's going to open and you don't just need one mentor that's something that I've been taught because I was having this chat with um, a senior partner in Grant Thornton and she said that her influence isn't just from one person she'll look at people above her and she might take bits from each person the bits that she likes and she'll try and implement them herself but it doesn't 
just come from this one amazing perfect person in the world like there are lots of different people that you can respect um and want to be your mentors and I actually asked the exact same question to her I said how you know how do you get a mentor Mm. and she said I've just emailed them spoken to them and been as bold as ever and literally just said do you want to be my mentor and that's what you have to do you just have to you know have to ask that exact question and what have you got to lose at the end of the day they're just going to say no fine well you're going to be in exactly the same position that you are now and the ones that say yes great that is so true I think we just forget that the worst case is just a no um, and nothing really changes <laughs> exactly exactly like you 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 were bold in asking well I personally think I think it's amazing that you asked us to be on your podcast I was really I was really scared honestly I didn't like I wasn't expecting Vincent to even accept my connection so I was just like I was the same like the worst thing is a no so I might as well just ask because I really like what you guys are doing and like I personally have a goal to also do something similar but like at the same time as someone who's just like a year 13 I don't have the network to like ask like people in the industry to mentor to be like to be a part of like a membership program because I really like the name like it starts with action but I was thinking of expanding it to like it starts with action academy or it starts with gen z Mm -hmm. mentoring schemes because I really believe in the importance of having people who are like really experts to kind of guide you in a way because of covid like one of my role models you could say is like lewis house um, and he did this like covid massive offer for like part of his um like one month of his program and i went on it and i found it like it really pushed me to like start what i'm doing because it was basically one month of learning from the best people on like different subjects so like email marketing copywriting from like the best in the field and then I was just thinking, like, what if people my age could, like, access this? They would get to probably where they want to so much earlier than have to, like, go through the whole education system and then save a lot of money to invest in all these really expensive courses. What if there was something, like, way more affordable, um, but they could still learn from, like, really top people in the world? And so when I then I came across your open, open private school and there's, like, this mentoring sh- um program and then all these mentors are like amazing people I was like this is basically kind of what I want to do um and it was just so it was just like really inspiring to see that there is something out there for young people um and I thought it would be just yeah crazy not to talk about it and share it that sounds like a great idea the challenges though like what to do um, how to start and like I guess I was thinking to like invite these top experts to like maybe give a one hour session per month for a bunch of young people like how much would I have to save to like ask them to come and yeah. do a session of all that I, I think you'd find that, that as Caroline said um, a number of them will be far more willing than mm. peers and I think to be honest I think a lot of these old I think a lot of these old people <laughs> old guys they're bored they're bored they want they've they've done their work they've they've done their years they 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 want to they want to be able to impart their their knowledge on on people Mm. and just in terms of what it is that you're doing keeps you very proud of starting what it is that you started because i would have i i I, you i was doing no such thing i was i was was doing those things yeah i was just going about my business and stuff and then part of working at the open private school and getting to read the applications makes me like it makes me it, on one hand i wish i was doing all the stuff that i'm seeing all of you guys doing at such mm-hmm. a young age it's actually it's incredible to know what you guys are doing but i'm also really happy because reading them it is people like you enterprising young people who step out of their comfort zone early on that are going to be massive successes in the future and it can all start with just a podcast that you have. So, yeah definitely Oh, thank you yeah it, I think like for me I I guess I really follow the motto of like seeking discomfort because I feel like every time 
I go through something really hard, you always end up growing and just becoming a better version of yourself. What were the like major challenges you personally had to face and what are you what do you think is the next stage for you guys in terms of getting out of your comfort zone to get to the next best version of yourself? The major challenge that I faced is probably uh, time managing my time effectively. That's I think that's my really? biggest that's my biggest challenge. Yeah. And I think I think I'm getting I think I'm getting better as time goes on. And getting better means, for example, I I plan I plan my weeks a lot further in advance now. I'm far more willing to move stuff, so I'm not doing too much on one day. And getting better at time management also means I'm not that I'm pretty bad at this still. But getting better at time management also means being able to say no more. Mm. So I always kind of I always want to, if there, if there are initiatives to do like social mobility, diversity, etc., I always want to help. I always, I find it difficult to say, to say no, even though it does take up, it does take up a significant amount of extra time and, and having, <coughs> doing that with your job and doing exams as well, it can, mm. it can be difficult. So I do think keeping all those plates spinning is my hardest challenge. And I think it's just, it's not a challenge I've ever solved, but something I need to just keep trying to get better at. Just to add to Vince's point there, because I you sent me a question about the advice that you'd give to people listening to this podcast. And whilst Vince was saying about the importance of saying no, but he is now in a luxury position because he has so many opportunities that are handed to him. But that is from a place of him saying yes to begin with. Mm. So I think so often like I can remember when I don't know I was at school or whatever I'd shy away from opportunities because I didn't think I was good enough or I'd I'd make up some excuse and actually you know now I regret that and it's so much better to say yes and you're always going to learn something from that opportunity you don't know who you're going to meet what door it's going to open and it's just so so important to try and always say yes to the opportunities that come to you but also to seek out opportunities um and Vince is like the living example of seeking out opportunities saying yes to opportunities and now he has to say no because he has so many given to him one of my I'd say my biggest challenge is just having the confidence in myself to believe that I can actually do it and I still, to this day, really struggle with thinking that I can. Um, and I'm sure that's going to be something that I'm going to have to deal with for a long time. But I've identified it and I'm trying to improve it day by day. And I think for me, having people around you that do support you and encourage you is probably the best thing for me personally that helps to take away that um disbelief at the moment mm, interesting I think mm. I also suffer with like a bit of confidence issues but I at the same time I feel like confidence comes from like taking action again like you feel really anxious and then but you do it anyway you take action on it and then you realize that you actually could do it and then that feels confidence and then like continues continuing doing yeah agreed mm. yeah. I, I think it's important to distinguish between uh confidence and courage because I, I wouldn't actually say i wouldn't i wouldn't personally say to myself that i am that i'm the most confident person like there are situations where i wouldn't be confident but what i am is i do think i have i do think i have courage that i'll never let I'd never let the fear of something go wrong stop me from doing it. And I think that's different to confidence, which is doing something and knowing before you do it that you're going to smash it. And that, that comes from, that just comes from practice. It's like sitting exams. You get more confident the more questions you do. If you're fearful of public speaking, you get better the more, the more times that you do it. But there, are in the, but there will always be things that you're doing throughout your whole life that you are scared of doing. And it is just about using your past experience to be like, I was scared before and I did it and I'm still alive. The sky hasn't fallen. 
I can try it again. Yeah, I agree. Public speaking is one of my, like, I see all these transformational, motivational speakers and like, wow. But then when I go and do public speaking, I like tremble and just like, ah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, yeah. me too. Don't you worry. Well, let me, so Vince, he is an exceptional public speaker. Um, he, so when he public speaks, before his speech, he will tell himself that he's going to nail it. Like he will literally speak. He'll be mumbling, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna smash this. I'm gonna smash this over and over and over again." Like that is, for, like to me, that is how you. That's how he has built his confidence. Whereas to me, that just seems so unnatural and awkward to talk to myself and tell tell me that I'm good. Like. I still can't get over that barrier of ever doing that. Mm. But maybe one day, never say never. Why do you think so? Why do you think you can't do it then? I, well, as in I just, I know it's just like a mental block and I hate it and I wish it wasn't there. Um, but like Vince, is, you know, he has a way of tackling it um, and that, that works for him. So I just have to find something that's going to work for me. Um, and as you say, practice does make perfect so you just have to take that leap of faith more often than not and hopefully you'll get better over time relating it to I just thought of it kind of reminded me of like, applying to Oxbridge um because it's more relatable to the audience in terms of like I applied but I know a lot who were too scared to apply because they kind of because they're from a state school and like Oxbridge is for private school people and they think they won't get in so they just don't even try I would just say like this is how I've conquered it anyway especially with reaching out and doing applications or asking for a favor whatever it is is to ask yourself what are you going to lose if if something goes wrong if you don't get that offer or whatever it is your circumstance doesn't change so the only thing that's going to happen is good really because they're either going to say no or they're going to say yes yes it's obviously incredibly exciting no doesn't matter it's not going to change a thing and that is how I have learned and made myself be much you know try and open more doors or opportunities because you're not going to lose anything it's only, only good's going to come of it I, I find it I find it difficult to give advice or something like that because in my head, I'm just thinking, it's, it's an application. If you don't get in, you don't get in. And you do, you do. There's nothing, there's nothing to be scared of there. You're going, you're going to get rejected by an institution. Same way we'll all probably get rejected by someone we fancy or something. It's not, it's not like a, I don't think getting rejected from Oxbridge is a big deal. What I would say if someone wanted to apply, is I would tell them to seek. I would tell them to seek out people who are at Oxbridge now and speak to them. And I'd also tell them to seek out um, state school students, particularly who are at Oxbridge. I tell them to look at programs that work on getting more state school students into Oxbridge. And I tell them to try to buddy up or find someone who's also applying for Oxbridge, because all of the things that you're scared of, all of these things all the things you're scared of are a lot of them probably aren't even true a lot of them are probably like myths that you've made up kind of in your head so you really yeah. need to get a thorough, a thorough understanding of what it is that that what does it take to get into Oxbridge and once you know once you know what it takes and I think there's so much less to be scared of because most of the time we're scared of the, the unknown we don't know what's going to happen so you need to just have it in front of you this 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 this, this and this and if you can't, if you're not good enough that time, just internalize that and make sure that you are better next time. And next time still might mean that you're not good enough, but if you keep doing that, then one day you will be, you'll be good enough for whoever you want to go to. Yeah, I think we are always afraid of stuff that hasn't actually happened yet. Um, yeah. And because of that, we don't even start. So I think like always remembering that, always asking ourselves whenever we're scared, it has that actually happened yet like no yeah <laughs> so that is actually that's a very good point to make. Oops. so when I was applying to jobs when I got out of university and you know you want to get on grad schemes and things like that 
I probably apply to about 40, maybe even 50 graduate schemes and I got none. I didn't get accepted from one single thing. And so then I had to think of a different route in and I went in there. So I didn't get on a grad scheme. I just went into a normal job in marketing and then realized that actually marketing wasn't for me. So then I started thinking about grad schemes again and accountancy and then in the end I did get on a grad scheme yes it was four years later not ideal but at the same time if you work hard enough and you're committed to something often it does happen and you just have to pick yourself up it's not always going to be perfect you're going to unfortunately you're going to come across hurdles but it's just how you react to those so remembering there's always a plan B or plan C or plan D to get to where you want to be. Always, always. As long as you have whatever you want right at the end, there's always different ways to get there. So what's your vision of the open private school in like the future? If we if we work if if we work as hard as we can, I see it as not I, I don't understand what could stop us from achieving what we want to achieve. And what I want to achieve personally is I want to be able to offer, I want to be able to offer this program to every single state school child in the UK. And we want to be able to pay for a scholarship for someone to go to university once per annum. That that is that's where I see us. That is amazing. I also I also think that obviously Corona has it was a bit of a curveball when we were trying to launch and then we realised that we might not be able to because we had to stay at home for four months. Mm. And then it meant that we've changed it to virtual, especially for, for the first few meetings between the mentor and the mentee. But that actually could potentially, if it works, that could open so many opportunities for us because then we're not restricted by location. And I know Vince is talking about the UK and that's definitely a sensible place to start. But you know, maybe one day this could be a global thing and we could have mentors in Australia connecting to mentees in the United States. Like, who knows? Who knows? Yeah, I completely agree. I think I've never like seen so many webinar opportunities and like you learn so much through this COVID, like all these because it's all online and like so convenient. Like I have friends who are in like Wales and they can't access like these internships in London um because of location um so it's really great to see how like the internet can really just create more access to opportunity for everyone but any of your like like personal goals in terms of like where you want to be in like next decade or so mm -hmm. well vince has some very clear goals which i'm sure he'll tell you about i'm just trying to think about whether my future employer is good like that mm. Okay, well, I'm going, Are you uh, tell everyone? <laughs> my future goal is to be, I want to be a politician, hopefully Home Secretary. That's, that is what I want to be in the future. So everything I kind of do at the moment is to build to that goal. I think mm. that I want to be able to, I really want to be able to present myself to the electorate by saying that from the very first day, that I started working, I thought to create change for people with no resources. And I managed to create that change within the places that I work and also within society. So I should be I should be trusted with the resources of the nation to create change for them as well. Mm, that's really cool. I mean, if I was to dream big and I don't know how I'm gonna get there yet, so I guess it will just be a matter of time and figuring it out. But in the long term, I would love to own my own company. And I have no idea what that's going to look like or even what products we're going to sell or whatever service. <laughs> um, but I think OPS will be a really good learning curve for me just to discover what it's like setting something up. But I do like the idea of being in complete control of something and mission and the vision and implementing it all so I guess we'll see it's really funny I'm kind of in a mix between you guys at the, in the beginning I wanted like I'm gonna I hopefully will do economics my goal was because I am really interested in like reducing poverty and inequality from like my personal experience and so I wanted to work in government policy to like tackle that 
but then corona came and I've had this massive shift of like you know what I want to do but I believe that although policy is good I think for change like for true transformation to happen it all it's really important to deal with the person's mindset like one at a time um and so I'm become more interested in starting a side hustle at least during like now until wherever to focus on young people and for everyone to focus on that having that like growth mindset and like not giving up and just not being afraid to like dream big because I think a lot of like my friends we always kind of take like pushed down by other people's beliefs in terms of like we can't really do what we want to do and so I want mm. to tackle that and I think once people realize that they can do whatever they want and like the sky's the limit then they would push themselves to also kind of create opportunities for themselves or like find more opportunities because I, I used to go to a different state school um, and they just didn't believe in themselves most of them and so they wouldn't even go and find these opportunities um, mm. and so that's kind of where I stand but um, it's really interesting that we're kind of in a mix of, yeah yeah it is it is it is and I think you have very your your ambitions are great and perhaps you could marry them both someone like perhaps yeah. to look at would be Mohammed Yunus who Mohammed was, Yunus. he's pretty much I think he's the world's greatest social entrepreneur so that is something that perhaps you could look at because I think you can marry both if you didn't want to give either of them up kind of yeah, I'm still trying to figure it out too to be honest <laughs> what kind of what what's the role about as a head of operations just like um so yeah so me and Vincent have basically split up all the application side and dealing with the mentees and mentors we received over 160 in the end for five spaces so it just shows how competitive it was um and we I mean I didn't expect to have so many we had no advertising or it was purely through our network and our LinkedIn posts yeah. and you know most of our LinkedIn posts go to people in our network i.e people who are working not students so it just shows the power of word of mouth really yeah. and how it got to you know all our mentees or candidates uh, so that sheer number was it did take a lot of time to go through all those applications and grade them um, and I think we've selected 23 um, candidate 24. the video in 24 sorry 24 um and so going forward my role is really going to be making sure that that process is as seamless as possible and making sure that the mentees have a good experience and the mentors um and trying to keep that connection running because even though the six months will be powerful especially for the mentee we really hope that that relationship will continue and flourish and that's partly in my control but it's partly not um, and I just want to make sure the things that are in my control are done to the best possible ability that they can be um, <clears throat> so that's really what my role is at the moment and I'm sure it will change constantly as we evolve um and innovate but that's what it that's what it's looking like at the moment i think it would be cool to have like maybe at the end people could be like i don't, I don't know how to say the word and like ambassadors for the open private school to help like spread the message more oh, but, yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely cool. but hoping that in time because when i joined my organization for example the graduates a year above me they were our buddies mm. and they already knew the ropes of my organization etc they knew how it all worked if I had any problems I could go to them and they weren't my people manager who's you know much more senior than I was at the time it's more of a mate um, and we're hoping that once we grow our network people that have been through it then can buddy those who are just coming onto it mm. and it can and then that can kind of facilitate, facilitate hopefully a more powerful network within the mentees that you can really utilize 
because there's nothing better than meeting people who have already been through it before but they're similar age to you and you kind of bond and hopefully you know in time do many other things together Mm, yeah I definitely think having a support system that are like similar age is so much more it's like comfortable and less intimidating sometimes I guess <laughs> exactly you you're not scared about asking a question which is really really important yeah so normally I ask my guests to like give listeners like a challenge so any challenge to like take action what challenges would you give to listeners you can have two challenges yeah. today <laughs> extra one wait so what what challenge would I give myself or to give Vincent um like to the listeners <laughs> like to oh, inspire them to, yeah to take action but it's cool if you want if, uh, if you guys want to give each other challenges now's the time <laughs> um oh goodness that's a good question Vince what would you say to a challenge for the listeners my challenge for the listeners would be to try to in the coming weeks and months if you know what your chosen subject area is or if you whether you don't know try to reach out to someone that is completely outside of your network and try to arrange conversations. That one person that is just completely unrelated to anyone you know opens up a whole new world, like a whole new world for you. My second challenge would be... Wait, no, you don't get two. Oh, you don't get two? <laughs> no, what? it's two, i.e. one each. Goodness sake, listen. <laughs> All right, cool, um, no, that's mine. You can have, you can have the second one. <laughs> I think mine would be we're at a very strange time obviously corona um and actually you can turn it into an opportunity and now so many things are online that you might have been restricted to going to either for location or whatever it was you wouldn't be able to get there and now you can because everything's accessible to everyone and so trying to find things that maybe it's a skill, new skill you want to learn or I don't know something you want to educate yourself in and try and really actually grow that skill in a time where we've we have more time to do these things when we're, we're less distracted um and yeah use corona as like use it efficiently everyone listen and take action on it do you want to <laughs> give each other a challenge or I can stop <laughs> um well i'll give Vin- vincent the challenge of passing his exams in august oh, well, I mean, the same one <laughs> yeah well hopefully we'll be successful in that one pretty steep challenge that <laughs> <laughs> oh, i'm sure you'll do amazing I hope so. how can people find you can they like connect with you guys separately or the open private school how can they reach out to you Yes, we are both on LinkedIn. I would truly encourage everyone to also visit the Open Private School on LinkedIn and have a look at our website because it sounds like a lot of these listeners would be um, applicable for our program. And I truly, truly believe in the idea and I feel like everyone should apply and just make the most of this opportunity. And hopefully you'll be one of the successful candidates and potentially it might change your life. Yep, I'm sure it will. (laughs) I echo, I echo everything Caroline said. I hope everyone enjoyed the episode. Definitely, definitely check out the Open Private School. Share it with students who you think can apply and apply yourself if you can. It's an amazing opportunity, honestly. Um, and if you're listening to Apple Podcasts, then it would be super cool if you could leave a review or a few stars. And feel free to reach out to me, reach out to Caroline, Vincent. And yeah, until next time. <laughs>